The Jets have a new safety in Adrian Amos. I think this signing is a risk worth taking, and I'll explain why today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, this is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Tuesday, June, June 13th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com. Thank you for making this show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so that you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you're listening on the podcast source and enjoy the show, please give it a five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help us out and help other Jets fans find Locked On Jets. Well, the Jets have a new safety. It is Adrian Amos. The Jets reach a deal with the free agent, the former member of the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears, a one-year contract worth... Up to $4 million, according to Jeremy Fowler of ESPN. I think a move that makes sense for this team on a number of different levels, and that's what we're going to talk about today on the show. Now, I think when you're talking about the June-July period, there are still free agents available. There's not going to be a superstar. There's no Patrick Mahomes out there. There's no TJ Watt out there. There's nobody. There's no Aaron Rodgers out there who's really going to make a huge difference for your football team. But there are players out there who can help you out. There are players out there who, if you're smart, can make a positive difference for your team in the autumn and in the winter. You know, sometimes these are role players. There might be a special team or a hero there. There might be a guy at a certain position. And safety is one of those positions. I say this frequently on the show. There always seems like in the summer, even as we get into the June-July period of the calendar, it always feels to me like there are still quality safeties available in free agency. And it's difficult to explain why. I know safety is not necessarily considered considered a high-value position, but it always feels like there's a guy you can get who will help stabilize that position. And I think it's very plausible Adrian Amos can be that kind of guy for the Jets. Now, guys who are available this time of year, typically there's a reason for it. Typically there's some degree of risk involved with them. It might be their age. It might be that there's been a decline in their performance. It might be that they're coming off an injury and still have to prove that they're healthy. Well, for Amos, there are two of these things. First of all is that he just turned 30. And that's combined with him coming off a 2022 season where pretty much everybody around Green Bay would tell you it was not a good season. It was probably his worst season as a pro. In fact, it was really his first bad season as a pro. He spent his entire career in the NFL North to date. He was drafted in the fifth round by the Chicago Bears back in 2015. And here's an interesting fact. The pick he was selected with actually originally belonged to the New York Jets, and it was traded from the Jets to the Bears when the Jets acquired Brandon Marshall. A great trade for the Jets, as Marshall had a fantastic season. And you, uh, last week I did a show with Michael Nania, my buddy uh, who writes at JetsXFactor.com, where we reviewed the biggest win the Jets had that season and the impact Marshall had. So check that show out if you want to hear more about Brandon Marshall's impact with the Jets in 2015. But it ended up actually being a pretty good trade for both teams because while the Jets got a transcendent season from Brandon Marshall, the Bears were able to draft a quality safety in the fifth round. Amos spent his first couple careers, a uh, couple of years of his career in Chicago, and then he went to Green Bay. He's been a really solid guy for, for, for both the Packers and the Bears up to last season. So I think what the risk is is just turn 30, kind of a decline in his level of play. Can he bounce back? That's essentially what the risk is. Now, for where the Jets are right now, where, if we're being honest, I think you'd probably say safety would be the biggest weakness on the defense. You could argue linebacker. You might even argue defensive tackle. But you know, I, I think I would go with safety. So for $4 million, you got a guy who's, yeah, he's coming off a bad season. Yeah, he just turned 30. But the guy who's been a good player through much of his career, and you got him for $4 million. To me, that's the kind of June risk that you take. If it doesn't work out, it's really kind of a low-risk kind of move, in part because the Jets aren't paying him that much money. And beyond that, the Jets do have two other safeties who have at least shown that they're average players in this league in Chuck Clark and Jordan Whitehead. So for what you could get out of him, to me, this move makes a lot of sense for the Jets. You know, Another member of the Green Bay Packers, the Jets have been bringing in Packers left and right. They 
hired Green Bay's old offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett, at the start of the offseason. Of course, there was the trade for Mr. Rogers, which you may have heard about. Alan Lazard is here. Randall Cobb is here. Billy Turner's here. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of former Packers. Adrian Amos joins them. I think that this move, again, I think that this is a move where you fit a need. And I'm not sure that, the, I think a lot of the moves have been, even if indirectly so, dictated by Aaron Rodgers. You know, we know that he had that great relationship with Hackett. Hackett was kind of hired in part because they Jeff thought they could help him land Rodgers. We know Lazard and Cobb are here because of Rodgers. Billy Turner probably had something to do with Rodgers as well. I think this is the type of move, though, that the Jets may have made anyway without Rodgers, in part because Amos does fit a pretty big need on this defense. It's not just that they needed a safety. It's that they needed a guy who could play at the back of the defense. In the NFL, you're seeing the the rise of two high looks again. You know, we, we kind of had that stretch after the Seahawks. The Legion of Boom came to power back in you know, 2012, 2013, where teams were putting an extra safety in the box, playing a single high look at the safety position. We're now moving back into two safeties deep. And the Jets, while they had two, well, they had two guys who were at least solid in Whitehead and Clark, they're both guys who are better t- close to the line of scrimmage. Amos is kind of a, a guy who brings a diverse skill set to the table because he's played, he's done pretty much everything at safety. He's played close to the line of scrimmage. He's played deep. He's done everything effectively. The Jets last season, they moved to, you know, even though Robert Sala comes from that Pete Carroll school, and even though, you know, he's known as a cover three guy, the Jets played a lot of two safeties back last year. And you should be able to play deep, if, especially at a too high look at the safety position. But again, Clark and Whitehead, both guys who are better closer to the line of scrimmage, not guys who are great deep. In fact, Whitehead was behind some bad plays the Jets gave up last season, some big plays where you know, he either took a bad angle or missed a tackle. So I think you needed somebody who could bring stability to that back of the defense because it's so important. You know, it's something that they really missed after Marcus May departed. Marcus May never got the headlines of Jamal Adams, and not that he should have. Adams was the better player. In fact, Adams' exit with the Jets was so ugly, and his play in Seattle has been so un- unremarkable that I think we kind of forget how great Jamal Adams was. But behind Jamal Adams, there was Marcus May, who did not really draw as much attention. That's just because he was so solid in the back of the defense. And sometimes with the safety, especially one who plays deep, you only you don't notice him because he's doing such a good job shutting down the big plays. And one of your biggest jobs is to prevent bad plays from turning into a catastrophe. Through his career, Amos has been able to do more than that. I don't want to say that that's all he can bring to the table because he's also been close. He's been good, good, good guy making plays close to the line of scrimmage. He's even had some experience in the slot, which I don't think the Jets will need him to do. But... More than anything, I think the Jets needed a stabilizing presence in the back of the defense. Now, again, there's always the risk. He's 30 years old. He's a free agent in June for a reason. There's no no slam dunk free agent available this time of year. So I'm not trying to oversell you on what this move will do for the Jets. But good teams in the NFL, smart teams, they're able to find guys at this time of the year. They're able to find contributors. Again, sometimes it's like a number four type receiver. Sometimes it's, you know, a backup who steps into a big role. Sometimes it's a guy coming off a serious injury. But for whatever reason, the NFL just does not seem to value the safety position. So there are guys available in June, in July, sometimes even in August, who can go and stabilize your defense. They're they're guys who can help provide you what you need at the safety position. And Adrian Amos could be that kind of guy for the Jets. And again, when I look at this, I said, what are the Jets really giving him? They're giving him $4 million. Not much money, especially for a guy who could bring you much more value as somebody who can prevent those big plays from going against your defense. Now, head here on the Lockdown Jets podcast, we'll continue our discussion of Adrian Amos. I think he's going to also unlock a potentially interesting personnel package for this team, a three-safety look, a big nickel. I'll explain a little, a little bit more as we continue on this Tuesday edition of the Lockdown Jets podcast. Today's episode of Locked on Jets is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. We have an NBA champion as the Denver Nuggets finished off the Miami Heat last night to win the first NBA championship in franchise history. The Heat falls short in the finals for the second time in four years. Stanley Cup could be wrapping up soon, but there's still plenty of sports action this summer. We got baseball in full swing, and all this leads up to the autumn when we're going to see the Jets take the field with Aaron Rodgers. Well, no matter what sport you want to watch, No matter what sport you want to bet on, head on over to FanDuel Sportsbook right now because new customers can get a no-sweat first bet of up to $2,500. You heard me right. 
That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So, I mean, that's really risk-free stuff right here. Even if you're not a baseball expert, you might want to head to FanDuel because there's no better place to bet on all the action than America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet of up to $2,500. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen or first watch every day. You everydayers who tune into this show consistently, send in your mailbag questions. Tomorrow we have our weekly Wednesday mailbag edition. That's Wednesday on Locked On Jets. But today we're talking about assigning the New York Jets made. They bring in safety Adrian Amos, a former member of the Chicago Bears, a former member of the Green Bay Packers, somebody they're hoping will provide stability to the back of their defense. But I think Amos brings something else that's interesting to the table. And I actually go back to when the Jets traded for Chuck Clark at the beginning of the offseason. The first move they made was making a deal, trading an end-of-the-draft pick to Baltimore for Chuck Clark, another move that I really liked. I have to say, I like what the Jets have done at the safety position this offseason. It's not the thing that's drawing the most attention, obviously, but I think they've upgraded this spot over what they had last year in LaMarcus Joyner and you know Jordan Whitehead, who's still here. But at the time the Jets traded for... Clark, it was kind of suggested by the people who cover the team that this was not the only move they were going to make. Because after the deal for Clark, you heard a lot of talk about how Clark was viewed as kind of like the third safety. And that really did not add up because you had Whitehead, but you did not have another starter. So you were kind of waiting for this move because for Clark to be the third safety, there has to be two safeties ahead of him. And at the time of the trade, Whitehead was the only guy you could say was ahead of him. This brings the potential for three safety looks or what's known as big nickel. Now, most of the time in the NFL, for a nickel package, and nickel package is five defensive backs, it's usually two safeties, three corners. And that's why you'll hear the guy who plays the slot referred to as the nickel corner. However, what some teams do is they play what's known as big nickel, which is a nickel with five defensive backs, but instead of having three corners, two safeties, they flip it. It's three safeties, two corners. Now, why do they do this? Well, they're kind of trying to get the best of both worlds. Now, in a normal 4-3 defense, you have four defensive linemen, three linebackers. Linebackers aren't that great against in, the, in coverage, typically. So you can kind of get beat when the other team puts three receivers on the field. And that's why you, that's why you put the nickel on the field. That's why you, add the ex, you take one linebacker off and you put the fifth defensive back on the field. The problem is if you put a third corner on the field, they're usually not that good against the run. So ultimately, what, you're, what the objective of big nickel is... You're, trying, you're putting a third safety on the field, and that's because safeties are usually better in coverage than linebackers are, but they're better against the run than corners are. And this is actually not the first time we've seen the Jets kind of embrace this concept under Robert Sala. In fact, we've, we've seen it happen quite a bit. You may remember in the 2021 draft, the Jets drafted a pair of college safeties, Hampson Nasraldine and Jamie and Sherwood, and they converted them to linebacker. And the amount of attention these moves have gotten seems disproportionate with their actual impact. Because when you're playing, when you're converting a safety to linebacker, that's not that different from playing big nickel. Essentially, in fact, really when you think about the roles that that, that linebacker takes on, that converted safety who's playing linebacker, they're not that different from just a conventional safety. So while people are, have complained about this a lot, I've heard a lot of, why, why are you taking a guy and playing him out of position? If the Jets just had left the label of safety on for Sherwood and Nasrul Dean, I don't think I think people would be praising them. Be, 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 you'd be hearing about how it's out of the outside the box, how they're playing big nickel. But for whatever reason, because the Jets decided to label these guys as linebackers, it, it's become like this talking point about how they have no idea what they're doing. I think it's totally unfair because ultimately, that that extra player, you know, he's usually either a linebacker or a corner. You know, usually, you replace the third linebacker with a third corner. What the Jets will probably do now with Amos and Clark and Whitehead is the two two of them, Amos and let's say Whitehead, will play will be the conventional safeties. Clark will be essentially in a hybrid role. He'll kind of be like half of a slot corner, half of a linebacker. And when you're in the slot, you kind of have to play you kind of have to play the run anyway because you're close to the line of scrimmage. So the Jets are kind of trying to get the best of all worlds with these three safety looks. The other aspect of this is, I think the other reason they, that they drafted these safeties and tried to convert them to linebacker, and it, I think it also applies to, to a three safety look, the Jets want as much speed as possible on the field. 
This is a defense Robert Sala runs that's based on principles Pete Carroll from the Seahawks has created. And one of the things the Seahawks like to do is they'll give you the two, three yard completion. You know, they'll, they'll let you gain three, four yards, but they're going to hit you really hard. They're going to have guys who rally to the football, guys who fly to the football and hit you hard. And the theory behind it is that over the course of, the, of a long game, yeah, you'll get a couple yards here, you'll get a couple yards there, but you'll just get worn out and you'll lose your will. And I think one of the things the Jets look to do is when you replace a linebacker with a safety, you add that extra speed. You got guys who can rally to the football. And the Jets also like their safeties to hit hard. So what they're trying to do is they're trying, and I think this kind of meshes with the Robert Sala vision for a defense with his goals for what he wants his unit to be. And I think that they've been trying to do this ever since he got here. Now, yeah, maybe they've taken some safety, safeties and labeled them as linebackers. In fact, you may even remember that first offseason Sala was here. They actually they tried to sign a safety, Keanu Neal, who spent much of, much of his career with the Atlanta Falcons, and they were going to play him at linebacker. And Neal ended up going to the Dallas Cowboys. So this is a clear pattern with the Jets under Robert Sala, where they, they essentially... In today's NFL, there's not really a lot of situations where you play the conventional 4-3. And on that note, I think that's one of the reasons people are overreacting a little bit to Quan Alexander being unsigned. I'd love to see Quan Alexander back. But the amount of time your third linebacker is on the field is not that great. What you want is somebody who's a little bit better than co- in coverage than your typical linebacker. Somebody who's faster than your typical linebacker. But somebody who can also play the run, maybe a little bit better than a typical corner. So I think that's kind of what the Jets are trying to do here. That's kind of the needle they are trying to thread as they try as they build this defense out. And I think Amos helps them with that. Because prior to today, they would have had to play a two-safety look of Clark and of Whitehead. And you have essentially two guys who are neither of whom is they're very good at playing the back of a defense. Either a single high or even part of a two deep. Now you have a guy who can play deep, which frees these guys up to get closer to the line of scrimmage, which means you can play more heavy boxes, but you can also have one of them essentially play like kind of a hybrid linebacker safety corner role. And I think that's mainly what the Jets are looking to do here. Now, head here on the Locked On Jets podcast, we will close out this Tuesday episode. I'll give you some thoughts on the players who might be most affected by this signing. That's as we continue this episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Tuesday. We're talking about the signing of Adrian Amos. The Jets bring in the veteran safety, 30 years old, former member of the Packers, where he was a teammate of many players who are now on the Jets, like Aaron Rodgers, Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Billy Turner. Also played with the Chicago Bears before he went to Green Bay. And I I feel better about the Jets safety position than I did this time yesterday. While this move does carry some risk, any signing at this time of year will I think the risks are very small when you think about the amount of money that the Jets will be paying him. When you think about how, well, it's not easy to find starters at this time of year. There are some positions where it's more likely than others, safety is among them. And the fact this guy's been a good player up to last year, and even though, even when you have a bad year at the wrong side of 30, it makes you pause a little bit. It's not like he's coming off two, three bad years. It could very well be a situation where Amos bounces back. Now, who are the players who are most impacted by this signing? To me, there's like one guy who's a, a huge loser with this move, and that's Tony Adams. Not, not a guy you may recognize all that much, but a guy who got a bit of playing time at the end of last year. A guy who's been, frankly, hyped up by some members of the media. I was always a little skeptical that Tony Adams was going to play a big role for this team this year, but to the extent it was possible, and before today, you know, if you were looking for the third safety, I think obviously Whitehead and Clark were going to be the top two. Adams may have been the third safety. He kind of loses out here. As I mentioned in the last segment, the difference between a third safety and a linebacker who, who's a converted safety, probably not that great in this defense. So I think that another guy who could lose out is Jamie and Sherwood. Because Sherwood was in line to receive more snaps, especially if the Jets did not re-sign Quan Alexander, which is still possible at this point in time. The Jets clearly like Quan. Quan played well last year, but he's still on sign this year. He's still on sign at this point of the calendar for a reason. And Sherwood was ready to step into that third linebacker role. Well, now I'm not sure how many snaps the third linebacker is going to get because essentially if you're playing big nickel, that might supplant your looks where you have the third linebacker on the field. Essentially what you're looking for is you're looking for a safety with linebacker skills, somebody who can step in and really give you the run support you're looking for from a linebacker while being a little bit better in coverage. So 
if this three safety thing takes off, Jamie and Sherwood could stand to lose some snaps. Hamza Nasruddin's another guy who could potentially be hurt by this, although it seems like Sherwood's higher on the depth chart at this point than Nasruddin. There's one other guy who's... I'm a bit intrigued by what happens now, and that is Quan Alexander. Now, in theory, I think this could make a Quan Alexander return a bit less likely. However... I do think the Jets like him a lot. I think the Jets want to have that depth at linebacker. Even if the third linebacker is not going to play as much this year, I don't know that the Jets are that great behind C.J. Mosley and Quincy Williams. So you still may want to have Quan around for depth. I think perhaps to the extent it was urgent, and I don't think it was that urgent. I think that, honestly, maybe we overstayed a little bit how essential Quan is to this defense. A guy I like, and I don't want to like come off as though I am bashing Quan Alexander, but I don't think he's quite as essential as he was made out to be. I think he's a little bit less essential when you have a third safety you can trust. But I think I, so. I'm kind of interested to see how this will play out. Will the Jets value the linebacker depth? Will they instead replace him with the third safety? I, we'll find out. I, I'm intrigued to see. I'm not ready to make it a statement because I know I know the second I say it makes it less likely. I know the second I say it makes it substantially less likely Quan's going to be back. That'll be the day the Jets sign him. So I'm in more wait and see mode on that one. But I think that this could impact. A Quan Alexander return potentially and calm down. It's not as big of a deal as you're making it out to be. I know Quan's got a lot of fans, and I like Quan Alexander. I think he played well last year. I don't think he's a make or break player for this defense, though. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. Give the show a five star review if you enjoy it and are listening on a podcast source, or a big thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube. Hope you have a great Tuesday, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow for our weekly mailbag show.